Hello YouTubers and welcome to Novice Talks with me your host Novice Corbius. And it's finally time, I'm excited. It's time to do our E3 predictions. E3 2021, we, it's been two years since we've last had an E3 and I can't believe it's been that long. For the last few years we've been making lists and predicting the hopes and speculations for E3 each year. I think we started with, yeah we started with 2018 and we've continued on with 2019 and we did do a prediction for last year but last year didn't happen. Um, and for the most part, we actually did pretty well. In 2019, most of what I said actually came through. So if you want to see those prediction videos, they're up on the channel. You can go find those. Um, but I'm really excited to be doing this prediction list again because as I was writing these down, I came to a shocking realization that most of these are actually going to show up at E3. Most of these have like a 100% guaranteed uh, chance to show up and that's got me really excited because now I'm realizing there is a great chance that I'm going to see a lot of what I actually want to see at E3 so this is really exciting for me and without further ado we're going to jump right into it so as usual I've divided this into predictions and hopes and there's one wildcard prediction at the end so going through the predictions list first which is where the most of these are Breath of the Wild 2 this is a 100% chance of showing up. It's pretty much guaranteed. IG and Uma said we would hear more later in the year. He was obviously referring to E3. When else would they show it? They're not going to show it their own time. E3 is the time. It's sort of history repeating itself because we had E3 2016 with Breath of the Wild. And now we're having E3 2021 with Breath of the Wild 2. Hoping for that big blowout trailer. And I'm really excited because at least I'm going to walk away with that. Uh, likewise, Skyward Sword HD, 100% chance. Again, the game comes out in July, they've done one trailer for it and they've showed the Amiibo. I'm sure they're dying to show us more. They usually waste time with things like this at the show, so that to me is obviously guaranteed. And continuing the Zelda trend, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity DLC. The first expansion pass, Pulse of the Ancients, comes out this month. We don't know when, we see nothing of it. Go figure, it's going to be at E3 just like the Breath of the Wild DLC was. Um, I'm really excited about that, I absolutely love Age of Calamity, it's a fantastic game. In my opinion, I actually enjoyed it a lot more than Breath of the Wild. Even though I loved Breath of the Wild and that was a phenomenal game, the story in Age of Calamity was just absolutely incredible to me. So I'm really excited to see uh, where they go with that. Um, no More Heroes 3, 100% chance. I've never really talked about No More Heroes on this channel, it's not a franchise I'm familiar with. It, it resembles Bayonetta quite a lot, it's like a male kind of oriented version of Bayonetta. I know it's quite popular in that it started out on the Wii, and I've seen the trailers for No More Heroes 3 so far. It is coming out I think November of this year, we've only seen like two trailers for it makes sense if it's coming out in November. It is possible though that they could save it for like one of their own directs in like September, October. But I think E3 they're gonna want to do a blowout for this. Um, likewise, I just mentioned it, Bayonetta 3. I put this down for 50%. Um, I have no idea, you know my stance on this. I was extremely excited when I first saw that trailer and when I went and played the first two games, but it's been dead silence for four years. I don't even know if this game is still coming. We got Astro Chain in that time, the wonderful one we the wonderful 101 remastered, as well as after working on the game for the PS5 called Babylon Falls. So I don't know if Bayonetta 3 is still coming or not. Um, and Platinum did tease that we would see the game this year, that there's a lot of time left in the year, you never know. So that could have been hinting to E3. I'm not getting my hopes up. I've been predicting E3 and the Game Awards for the last four years, so that's a 50% chance. We're getting Breath of the Wild, so Bayonetta 3 would be a plus as far as I'm concerned. If we don't see it, I've lost all hope of ever seeing that game. Uh, continuing the trend of the number three, Splatoon 3. A lot of people think this is guaranteed. I don't think so. I think there's a 40% chance of this. And this is because Nintendo's trend with showing games when they announce them is that 
they'll show them and then they won't talk about them for another year or two. Yes, Splatoon is coming next year. We don't know when next year. It could be summer of next year. It could be like holiday of the year. That's why I think we won't see this until like later on, like maybe even next year. I think we've seen all we're going to see of that game for now. Because they barely even showed much in the trailers. And I've learned that when Nintendo shows very little in their trailers, it means you're not going to see the game for a while. But maybe I'm wrong. They always surprise us. Uh, next one is an obvious one. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, 100% chance. Now, the one caveat with this is, will they announce the last two fighters together, or just one? I'm a firm believer that we're getting two of them at the same time, just because it makes sense to cap it off with both of them, but maybe they'll just do one to keep the hype going as long as possible. Um, either way, that's guaranteed. They've done it since 2018, and every year with E3 they did it with the Wii U Smash as well, so that's obviously going to be there. The Golf Super Rush, again, 100% chance. The game comes out, I believe, in June or July. Uh, we haven't seen much of that game. We got one trailer and one gameplay look. Obviously going to show up, which I'm not mad about. A lot of these games have been announced, but quite a few of them I'm excited for. So, hey, I don't mind one or two games showing up that I have no interest in. Uh, continuing the trend of announced games, Pokemon Legends Arceus. 100% chance. The release date was revealed as January 23rd of next year, so of course they're going to show it. I say that because if this year is anything like the previous years, Nintendo will have one, maybe two full-size Nintendo Directs during the year after E3, and it is possible they could show it then, but I believe they're going to want to do a big focus at E3 first. Uh, likewise with the Pokemon remakes, those come out in like October, I think, October, November, so obviously I think you're going to see those. Uh, now, Zelda Collection, I've marked down here. I, I was going to split this up into Twilight Princess HD, Wind Waker HD, or do it separately. I didn't know how to do it, so I just wrote down Zelda Collection, any form, 50% chance. You know, it is the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. It could go either way. At the same time, we have Skyward Sword coming this year. Breath of the Wild is probably March of next year. And to release like a collection or any other remasters in that time frame uh, is quite a lot of content. I'm not sure if they're going to do it, but maybe they'll shock us and they'll actually do that. But that's why I have a 50% chance. Mario Kart 9, 20% chance. Listen, I know everyone thinks this is guaranteed. It's been fucking eight years since the last Mario Kart game. But we have a Mario Kart game on the Switch. They're not gonna release another one on the Switch. Let's be completely real. I was gonna mark this much lower, but I gave it 20% because Nintendo shocked me with Splatoon 3. I did not expect that this generation, so Mario Kart 9, yeah, it could show up. But again, Mario Kart 8 is doing ridiculous numbers still. And plus they have Mario Kart Tour for phones, and they have live circuits, so they have loads of Mario Kart projects going on. They're not short for content there, so I think Mario Kart 9 is a next-gen thing. I did a video on that last year. I'm pretty sure like Mario Kart is going to transition into Nintendo Kart going forward, but who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Um, Super Mario Odyssey 2. 10% chance. I know this is controversial. I just don't... Well, two things. Number one, I think it's too soon. Um, I think usually... I think it might be five years. I think next year is when we'll see and get news about the next 3D Mario game. And also because we had the 35th anniversary last year, Nintendo knows we're stuffed with Mario content and that they have to focus on Zelda, Pokemon, and Donkey Kong, which we'll get into. So I don't think that's come up. Plus, I don't think they'll make a sequel to Odyssey. They've never made sequels to their 3D Mario games, with the exception of Galaxy. Uh, so I don't think that has a chance of getting a sequel. I think they'll make a brand new game, because there's not much they can do with Odyssey. Um, as I mentioned as well, Donkey Kong. 50% chance. It's the 40th anniversary. Donkey Kong is a big deal for Nintendo. 
yes, it's kind of like fallen on the wayside in recent years, and Nintendo's kind of viewed it for the most part as part of the Mario franchise. But I think this is the big year, and I really hope as well we get a Donkey Kong game and watch. I have that down in hopes, and I'll talk about that later. But I would love a game and watch for like any of these games, really. Just give us more. The Mario one was awesome. It was a nice, charming, and neat little device to have, and it was a cool throwback and nostalgic little piece. I would love them to re release the dual screen one. They probably won't, but who knows? We'll see. But yeah, I don't know. 2D, 3D, you can decide. I have no idea. Uh, Mario Party. Uh, this was a hard one to put a chance on because, well, I do think it's too soon. After doing some research and looking at the releases of previous Mario Party games, they've milked those things very quickly. They've released like two or three per generation in recent years past, and like very quickly after each other. I think on the GameCube, they were all released like one or two years after each other in between, so Mario Party is always tightly uh, put together, so 30% chance. It's not higher because they recently updated Super Mario Party, so that seems odd. They also did the same with Mario Kart 8, so again, that kind of dampens the chances for both of those games, I feel. For Emblem, 60% chance, because Fire Emblem has been on quite the resurgence recently. Nintendo's really been pushing hard with this franchise. Uh, people are expecting, I think, remakes or something this year. I have no idea. I've never played those games. I have no idea what the situation is, but... Considering the success and the rebirth of the franchise after the 3DS era, I think Fire Emblem's chances are pretty good. And speaking of other franchises that could do with revival, Star Fox, um, 50% chance. It's very hard to predict, like, it could happen, it probably won't happen, Star Fox is in a weird flux position. I really don't know um, what to put that, so I threw that down as 50%. And those were the last of my predictions. Now we're moving on to my hopes. Kicking off my hopes, we start off with Metroid. Um, writing these down shocked me because for the first time ever, Metroid has a really high chance of showing up. I say that every year, every E3, every Game Awards, every Nintendo Direct. But when you really lay it out, um, Metroid's options are quite high. Metroid Dread, 50% uh, chance. I know it's a Dread, it could be remakes, whatever, 2D Metroid, I should have specified that, but Metroid 5 or Metroid Dread specifically, 50% chance. It has been quite a while since the last 2D Metroid. I hope to God Mercury Steam are not involved, but if they are, oh well. But 50% chance, I think Metroid's chances are good. Not only because it's the 35th anniversary, but there has been a lot of talk about Metroid recently. Everyone's talking about Metroid, and as a fan, it's really exciting to see the entire Nintendo community really talk and push for Metroid, and uh, it's quite warming to the heart. Uh, obviously, you know what the next two are. Metroid Prime Trilogy and Metroid Prime 4. Trilogy, 50% chance. What can I even say that hasn't been said already? This game, it feels like a guarantee, it feels like it has to happen, but maybe it's too soon, I don't know. 50% chance. Prime 4, um, I know I've been saying in my Metroid Prime 4 videos and update videos in the last few months, years, that I think 2021's E3 would be the time we actually see it. Because from what we've seen from the job listings, they're practically done the game. They've started work on a new IP, so Metro Prime 4 seems to be mostly done, so that would mean we would see it. But logic tells me they're not going to show this game until like a few weeks before release because they don't want to repeat with what happened before. They don't want to tease us and show the game and then have to start all over again. They're going to wait till everything's 100% guaranteed and perfect. But again, maybe they shock us. That's why I have it down to 50%. You can never be certain with Metroid, but three Metroid possibilities at 50%, those are the highest odds I think we've ever had. Um, Mario Galaxy 2 Deluxe, 40% chance. Mario Galaxy 2 was left out of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Um, 
it makes sense to give us that new game, and my hope is that we're gonna get Mario Galaxy 2 separately in a deluxe with new content, so we can get ready for Mario Galaxy 3. That is my hope, that is my dream. I'm fucking naive for thinking that, I know, but that's what I'm hoping for. But within reason, I said 40% chance. I think they're not going to focus on Mario a lot this year, but if they are, I think that's the big Mario game they'll focus on. As for Super Mario Galaxy 3, that's what I want over an Odyssey sequel, but realistically the chances are lower. I gave it a 15% chance, which is higher than what I think most people would give it. And it's because Miyamoto said in 2015 that he wants to make another game. They want to challenge what they could do with uh, Mario Galaxy. And yeah, that could have evolved into Odyssey. It probably did, but I'm holding out hope. Mario Galaxy 2, Mario Galaxy 3, I'm hoping really badly, but we'll see. And uh, finally, we come to something that's the one thing on this list that has like almost a guaranteed no chance of showing up. Golden Sun. Golden Sun 4. Um, I've played through the entire franchise recently. I started with Golden Sun and Dark Dawn uh, two years ago, Jesus. Uh, I did a review on the channel. I absolutely loved that game. It was phenomenal. Recently I got to play Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age. Had the, had the games modded onto my 3DS. I've loved them, I've had a blast playing them. So I'm in a kind of Golden Sun mood and hype kind of mindset. But 5% chance. Look, it's probably even lower than that. It could go either way. I don't think we're going to see it as much as I really want it. Golden Sun feels too dormant. However, RPGs, they're really popular on the Switch, so who really knows? Um, probably not anytime soon. Probably after Mario Golf comes out, if it's even happening. And finally, I mentioned the Game & Watch earlier. 30% chance for a Zelda Game & Watch slash Game Watch. I really want the Zelda one so badly. Give us that dual screen release. You can have the original, you can have Zelda 1 and Zelda 2 on it as like the NES ROMs and you can have the original Zelda Game & Watch game as your Game & Watch game. That way you have your three games. I would love that so much and they could do a similar thing with Donkey Kong. <sighs> 30% chance, I would say 50, but it did okay, the Mario Game & Watch did okay, but I don't know if Nintendo wants to keep that going, if that was just a once-off thing for the 40th anniversary. It is the 40th anniversary of Donkey Kong though, so your guess is as good as mine. I really badly want one, but we'll see. I'm not getting my hopes up for that. And finally, we come to my last prediction. My wild card. Um, this is something I've been hoping for for like the last three, four years that I've been doing these predictions. A port of the Evil Within 1 and 2 for Nintendo Switch. The odds are actually higher this year now that Microsoft and Nintendo are buddies and that we're seeing some weird collaboration that's going on with them. Chances are pretty high, Microsoft owns Bethesda, maybe it happens. A lot of games are coming to the Switch that we think would never come. Bethesda said that they wouldn't bring Evil Within to the Switch because they felt that Switch audiences wouldn't be interested in it. That's Microsoft's decision to make now, so I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, but I doubt it at the same time. What need is there, I guess? It's... I can't... 50%, look, I know that's really high, it's probably like a 10% chance, but I'm really hopeful, but at the same time, I gotta be real. Uh, I don't think it's happening, but I'm hoping for it. So yeah, those are my predictions and hopes, but looking at this list, the last two years, I have been really dismayed. I've gone very much for the 50 to 60% range most years for my predictions. 30% in a lot of cases, but this year, almost everything in my predictions list is 100%. And most of the stuff in this prediction list is stuff I want, so there is a high likelihood I am going to walk away from E3 this year, a very happy man. Um, even if we don't get Metroid, Breath of the Wild 2, Age of Calamity, 
potential of a Game & Watch, you know, I'm gonna walk away with this really excited. Will it, it has the potential to be the best E3 ever. Will it be the best E3 ever is another thing, I don't know, but there's a lot of things lining up here. I was very skeptical and not wanting to get my hopes up a few minutes ago, but when I wrote these down, I realized, oh shit, we actually, there's a great likelihood for most of these showing up. And I gotta give Nintendo credit, this could possibly be a phenomenal E3. And watch now none of these will show up and I'll look like a complete fool, as I did in the previous year. But I did pretty well in my predictions in E3 2019, so that could have been a fluke. Maybe I'm wrong again, but most of these predictions are things that are guaranteed. There's, there's not a lot of risks I've taken with this. Like, we know for a fact like half of these are going to be up there, so... I mean, are they really predictions? But either way, this has made me really excited. I cannot wait for Nintendo's E3 conference. Tuesday, June 15th. Uh, I will be recording my reaction to the show, as always. Really excited. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you there. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. What are your predictions for Nintendo 83 2021? Do you agree with mine? Do you think I'm right? Do you think none of these are showing up? What are your own predictions and hopes? I want to hear everything you have to say down in the comment section below. And yeah, with that all said, thank you all for watching and please subscribe. Novas Corbis, 